here with this election. And we all know how that's right. Uh, Senator, as I pointed out in my statement, uh, Senator Franken, it was, there were only three agencies that directly involved in this assessment plus my office. But all 17 signed on to that. Well, we didn't go through that, that process. This was a, a special situation because of the time limits and my, uh, what I knew to be the, who could really contribute to this and the sensitivity of the information, we decided it was a conscious judgment to restrict it to, the, to those three. I'm not aware of anyone who dissented or, or, di or, or disagreed when it came out. Okay. And I think anyone who's looked at even the unclassified report is pretty convinced that this is what happened. Um, and one of the questions is why did they favor Donald Trump? Um, there are a number of uh, contacts and communications that between Trump campaign officials and associates and members of the Trump administration, uh, Jeff Sessions, as uh, Senator Leahy mentioned, uh, Carter Page, a former campaign advisor, Paul Manafort, who was a former campaign manager and chief strategist, Rex Tillerson, uh, Secretary of State, got a friend of Russia Award, Ruch, uh, Roger Stone, uh, and of course, uh, Jared Kushner, uh, White House Senior Advisor, Simon Law, uh, and Michael Flynn. Uh, all this, that's a lot in, in my mind. Now, going to Flynn, he uh, appeared uh, during the campaign on Russia Today. Russia Today is the uh, propaganda arm, one of the propagandas arm of, and now you, uh, General, since you've retired, have you appeared on Russia Today? <laughs> not, not wittingly, no. No. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and General Flynn received uh, uh, $37,000 for sitting next to Putin at the 10th anniversary of, uh, of Russia Today. Um, it seems, we, all this seemed very odd to me and raised a lot of questions. I was struck that Mr. McGahn did not ask you in the second meeting why DOJ, uh, General Yates, would have concerns that the uh, DO, uh, th that the uh, National Security Advisor had lied to the Vice President in the first meeting. Did you mention that 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 was that he might be compromised? Certainly, we went through all of our concerns in the first meeting, and it was in the second meeting that he just raised the question of essentially why is this an issue for the Department of Justice if one White House official lies to another? Okay. I don't understand why he didn't understand that. Uh, I'm not sure I can help you with that, <laughs> Senator. Okay. Uh, this is General Flynn, after that, for 18 days, stayed there and was in one classified thing after another. Uh, there are policies to deal with uh, who gets clearance, security clearance, and not. Mm -hmm. um, executive order. 12968 outlines the rules for security clearances, and it says that when there is a credible allegation that raises concern about someone's fitness to access classified information, that person's clearance should be suspended pending investigation. Is that right? The executive also, uh, order also states that clearance holders must always demonstrate, quote, trustworthiness, honesty, reliability, discretion, and sound judgment, as well as freedom from allegiances and potential for coercion. Is that right? And yet, the White House counsel did not understand why the Department of Justice was concerned? Well, to be fair to Mr. McGahn, I think the issue that he raised, he, he wasn't clear on, was why we cared that Michael Flynn had lied to the vice president and others. Why that was a matter essentially I think that's clear. within DOJ jurisdiction. I think it's so clear. I, yeah. I can't, and the president had told, the, uh, President Obama had told the incoming 
president-elect the two days after the election, don't hire this guy. I don't know anything and, about that. So. Well, that's what we've heard. <laughs> and we have McGahn doesn't understand what's wrong with this. And then we have Spicer, the press secretary, saying the president was told about this. The president was told about this in late January, according to the press secretary. So now he's got a guy who has been, the, the, the former president said don't hire mm. this guy. He's clearly compromised. He's lied to the vice president. And he keeps him on. And he lets him be in all these classified uh, phone calls. Uh, 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 he lets him talk with Putin. President of the United States and the National Security Advisor sit in the Oval Office and, and, and discuss this with Putin. Um, is it possible that the reason that he didn't fire him then was that well, if I fire him for talking to the Russians about sanctions, and if I fire, what about all the other people on my team who coordinated? I mean, isn't it possible that the reason, because you ask yourself, why wouldn't you fire a guy who did this? And all I can think of is that he would say, well, we've got all these other people in the administration who have had contacts. We have all these other people in the administration who coordinated, who were talking. Maybe that. I'm just trying to put a, we're trying to put a puzzle together here, everybody. And maybe, just maybe, he didn't get rid of a guy who lied to the vice president, who got paid by the Russians, who went on Russia today, because there are other people in his administration who met secretly with the Russians and didn't reveal it till later, until they were caught. That may be why it took him 18 days until it came public to get rid of Mike Flynn, who was a danger to this republic. Care to comment? I don't think I'm going to touch that, Senator. <laughs> Thank you. Senator Blumenthal. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I want to thank uh, you, Senator Graham and Senator Whitehouse, for conducting this hearing in a very bipartisan way and for prioritizing this issue, which is a, such gravity to our democracy. I want to thank uh, each of you not only for your long and distinguished service, but also for the conscience and conviction Second that round. you have brought to your jobs, whether we agree or disagree with you. I, got three people. I hope that there are young prosecutors around the country and young members of our intelligence committee who will watch this hearing and say, that's the kind of professional I want to be, not just expert, but also people of deep conviction and conscience. And I agree with my colleagues that there ought to be an independent commission that can have public hearings, produce recommendations and a report. But I also believe that there has to be a special prosecutor. Because what I hear from people in Connecticut and from my colleagues in their town halls and meetings is that people want the truth uncovered about how the Russians sought to interfere and undermine our democracy and our electoral system. And they also want accountability. They want not only the Russians to pay a price, they want anybody who colluded 
with the Russians or aided and abetted them to pay a price as well. And there are criminal statutes that prohibit that kind of collusion and impose serious criminal fines and imprisonment for people who might have done that. And we know that the FBI is now investigating the potential collusion of Trump associates and Trump campaign and administration officials with the Russians, as Director Comey has told us and made public. So there's no classified information there. The meeting that the FBI conducted on January 24th, preceded by one day, approximately, your first meeting with Donald McGahn, isn't a fact uh, that Michael Flynn lied to the FBI? And, and I can't reveal the internal FBI investigation, Senator, even though, it's not, even though that part would not technically be classified, it's an ongoing investigation and I can't reveal that. Did you tell Donald McGahn that uh, then National Security Advisor Flynn told the truth to the FBI? No, he asked me how he had done in the interview and I specifically declined to answer that. Because it was part of an investigation. That's right. Was that intended to indicate to him that Michael Flynn had a problem in that interview? No, I was intending to, inter to, to let him know that Michael Flynn had a problem on a lot of levels, but it wasn't necessarily in, with respect to how he performed in the interview. I was intentionally not letting him know how the interview had gone. And lying to the FBI is a crime, correct? It is, yes. A violation of 18 mm -hmm. United States Code 1001. That's right. And it's punishable by five years in prison? Yes, it is. So if Michael Flynn lied to the FBI, he had a ton of legal trouble facing him. He could face criminal prosecution if he lied to the FBI, yes. And if he became a foreign agent for another country, for Turkey, which he was a foreign agent <coughs> for, without getting permission from the Department of Defense, he faced criminal penalties for that and still faces them, correct? Yes, it's certainly fair violations can be criminally prosecuted, yes. In fact, it's a violation of 18 United States Code 219, and that's punishable by two years in prison, correct? Mm -hmm. And his failure to disclose payments from foreign sources, which also he had done before you went to Donald McGahn, is also criminally punishable, is it not? That was not a topic I discussed with Mr. McGahn, and so not something I can, can discuss here today. But it is, in fact, from your knowledge, a violation of criminal law, is it not? To not disclose payments from foreign, yes. But I'm not, I'm not speaking to his specific conduct, just generally that it is, yes. If uh, Michael Flynn is prosecuted for any of these crimes, isn't it possible that the Vice President of the United States might be a witness? I guess it would depend on the crime. If it were a false statement to the FBI about his conversations with the Russians, wouldn't the vice president potentially be called as a witness to corroborate that false statement? You know, I would be certainly that's possible, but I'd be speculating how such criminal prosecution would come together. So where I'm going is the need for a special prosecutor is because officials at the highest level who are responsible for appointing the Deputy Attorney General, the United States Attorney General, are all potentially witnesses, and they are even targets, mm -hmm. correct? Potentially. And so a special counsel, in order to hold those government officials or others responsible, really has to be independent, correct? Well. Department of Justice lawyers pride themselves in being able to be independent regardless of whether they're appointed as a special counsel. But the ultimate decision whether or not to prosecute mm -hmm. for the sake of appearance as well as in reality should be made by someone who is unquestionably independent, objective, and impartial. Senator, I absolutely understand your concerns here. But the fact of the matter is, is that particularly as someone who just departed from the Department of Justice, I'm just not going to wade into whether or not they should have a special counsel or an independent counsel 
in this matter. I don't, I don't really think they need the formers um, telling them how to do their jobs. Well, I'm going to be very unfair to you and just ask you as a private citizen, wouldn't you like to see <laughs> a special counsel appointed under these circumstances? I'm not going to go there either, Senator. <laughs> as an expert witness for our <laughs> committee. I'll qualify you as an expert if <laughs> Judge Graham allows me to do it. Uh, let me You'll have to pay her. <laughs> uh, let, let me just uh, close by asking you, um, my colleague, uh, Senator Franken, made reference to warnings given to the, uh, given by President Obama to then President elect Trump about hiring Michael Flynn. Uh, that is a public report from the New York Times, in fact, of today, which I ask be entered into the record. And I also ask, uh, and be entered into the record, the February 9th report from the Washington Post. I believe there's been a reference to it. Without that published report and without the free press telling us a lot of what went on, uh, Michael Flynn might still be sitting in the White House as national security advisor because by January 30th, you were forced to resign, correct? You were fired. Yes, I was fired. So nobody was around to tell the White House, as you said, that our national security was in danger. Well, there were still the career officials in the National Security Division who had been working with me on this matter.